Hi everyone. So welcome you all in the second part of our AWS interview question series. And here we are going to talk about AWS S3. Like, uh, you can see, so basically S3 is a storage service, which is known as S3 because it's full from is like a simple storage service. The another question will arise from S3 is like, what is the maximum size of S3 bucket you can create in S3? So that will be five TB. Okay, remember it. Then a very important question will ask multiple times in interview is like, what is the maximum single object of any size you can store in the S3. So that is 160 GB. And you have multiple options like create, read, delete with S3 to play with data. So like S3 triggers, S3 web hosting, static web hosting. So various services are available in S3 bucket with S3. And you can store the data in object format, okay? Now, the most important question is, what are the S3 storage classes? Like S3 is divided into many storage classes. The mostly we use is on daily basis in our offices in corporates we use is like a standard, which is like frequently accessed data. You can keep it there. And this is the default one. And another one is intelligent sharing where the data will be changing according to the access patterns. It will check your access pattern and it will change the data. So there will be a fee for monitoring it and accordingly it will charge. So there will be different charges for different storage classes in S3. Another one is infrequent access. If you are experiencing the data very less frequently. So that you can keep inside a infrequent access class, okay? And here the minimum storage duration is an object size. Then we have one zone. This is recreatable, let's access data, okay? And there will be retrieval fee in GB. Then the important one are like Glacier and Deep Archive where you can store the data for long-term. Okay, so suppose the, you want to store a data which you are not accessing for daily or weekly or monthly, you are accessing that data in yearly, like after five years, after six years, after 10 years, you are accessing the data. For example, there is a hospital where so many patients have kept their data. So they will be not accessing it daily. Once the patient will come again, then they will access the data. So that will be for like five years, 10 years, two years, something like that. And there will be less charges for storing the data. Amazon will charge you less. and there is a situation like the retrieval will be in minutes, hours, or like uh, not in seconds, like in a standard intelligent tearing and infrequent access, you can access the data in seconds, but in Glacier and Deep Archive, it will taking longer time, okay? Now, another question is what is uh, like entry points, how to control entry points of S3 bucket? So this is very important question related with S3 bucket security. So how you will come control it you can get like uh, various options like S3 access point, S3 bucket policy, ACL and IAM. So firstly, like take the IAM. So here we are going to talk about AWS identity and access management, where you can create group rules and users to control and get the proper access to the S3 data. Another one is ACL access control list to get the proper access of S3 data and whatever folder you kept inside a bucket in the S3. Then we have like bucket level access so that we can create by using bucket policy. Like who is going to get the list of data, get the uh, read the data, delete the data that you can define in the bucket policy in the JSON format that you can keep in the bucket policy for each bucket. And uh, in the configuration, you can keep it. And it, it is a most effective exercise, basically, like many companies have going uh, is implementing it and uh, that is for security purpose then s3 access point s3 provides predefined bucket to a particular application you can get proper access to element that we are able to use to control get proper access to s3 data so these are the options to controlling the s3 entry point of s3 bucket now the interviewer will sometime ask you what is the difference between s3 and other services in amazon aws so the important one are like, what is the difference between S3 versus like EBS? Because both are storage services, you can say. But EBS comes with like EC2 instance management tool while S3 come as a entity which can be stored. Like you can store any data in S3 where it's like logs data, your files, your anything, any files, you can store it. In S3, you get data security, which is very high, but in EBS, it is less. But one thing is there, like you can take the backup of EBS for longer run. Like if you have kept some data in EC2 and you have stopped the EC2 by mistake or you have terminated it, then EBS uh, snapshots can be used to recreate the EC2 instances. So that's the solution you can see. Then in S3 data center using redundancy, but in EBS only one data center can be redundancy, okay? Now, next question is how to invoke Lambda from S3? This is a very important question. Many interviewer is going to ask you. So basically S3 have multiple triggers like put, delete, create. So S3 can send an event to a Lambda function when an object is created or deleted by using put event. For that, we need to configure notification setting on a bucket and grant Amazon S3 permissions 
to invoke a function on the functions re resource based permission policy. That means IAM role basically you need to provide S3 permission access like S3 read only access or S3 full access for Amazon that function role and it will work. Okay. So these are the most important and most widely asked repetitive questions that we have covered. If you need more AWS S3 question, then write, then subscribers and just comment below. Thank you.